me on this quite bright Monday morning. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very elegant wire wrapped pendant and pair of e-rings using wire work. It's not too tricky to do and we've got the most beautiful beads as well for you today. You're getting loads in your kit so you're going to be able to make a full set and if I've looked correctly I think you're even getting a chain in there so you'll be able to make it and wear it straight away. So drop me a comment, let me know where you're watching from, how you're doing this morning, have you had a nice weekend um, and are you looking forward to this make? So I'm going to take you over to the website very quickly and show you the beautiful, beautiful products in today's kit. And then we're going to get ready and we're going to start making. So I'll take you over to the website. Good morning to Lucy. How are you doing, my love? Um, absolutely been loving the bracelets and necklaces that you've been making with the stone chips. Uh, do remember, if you make something, do share it in the handmade group and let me have a little look. Good morning to Janice. Hello to Francis. Hello to Carol. And good morning to Angela as well. Okay, over to the website we go. If you aren't sure where to find us, all of our kits are on totallybeads.co.uk and you can go into the video category section here. You can click on this big logo at the top here or you can even scroll down into video tutorials. Everything that we've been doing recently is right at the top for you to find and today is the Aurora Pendant and Earring Set. I'm very excited about doing these, they are lovely. Now we're going to be using some 8mm beads, so if you're not wanting to get the set and you just want to, maybe you've got wire already and you're just looking for a mix of beads, then we've got a gorgeous mix of gemstone round beads for you on a lovely long string there. They are £7.50. I think for the price, you may as well get the kit because in the kit is everything that you need and everything that we're going to be using today. It is reduced to just £6.99. And once you've seen this jade, I think you'll agree with me, it's an absolute bargain. The jade is beautiful, really stunning beads and they've got beautiful colours on them. They're also rather expensive. So for £6.99, you're going to get your three pieces of your 8mm rainbow jade in that kit. You're also going to get nine pieces of 3mm acrylic beads in silver, which I've just been kind of embellishing the front of those pendants and earrings with. You're going to get the 0.8mm silver wire, and you're also going to get the 0.3mm silver plated wire as well. Now the wire is beautiful, it is very soft, it's copper and it is plated in the most beautiful silver colour. It's also tarnish resistant as well so that colour is not going to wear off. Um, so we're going to be using the 0.3 as the weaving wire and the 0.8 as your base wire. You're also going to get three pieces of 6mm silver jump rings. You don't necessarily need to attach one of those to the pendants. The bail will make sure that your chain sits right. But we are going to add them onto your earring so they'll face forward when you wear them and attach them to your earring hooks. You're also going to get your earring hooks and you're also going to get a snake chain as well. Now, I love the snake chains from Totally Beads. <coughs> Excuse me. They're very, very lovely. They're very long lasting as well um, and really comfortable to wear. And I think... If you do wire work, then they go with, with pretty much everything. They are absolutely lovely. So this is the Aurora kit today. We're only using one colorway. You could, if you've got wires in different colors, you could add that instead. But this is how they look. They're very, very beautiful. And obviously the wire is gonna match with all of your findings, those earring hooks, your chain, and those acrylic beads as well. So this is how the set looks like worn. They are your beautiful earrings, and I'm going to be showing you how to make them um, mirror image. So they will both, well, I wear them like this, so they face in um, towards my face um, and your pendant as well. So very excited to be working with these today and looking forward to showing you them. £6.99, everything you need is in your kit. So I'm going to have a little look in the comments and say hello to you all again before we get going. Um, lots of you in today, which is lovely. 
Um, I've said good morning to Angela, I think. Good morning to Debbie. Hello to Camille. She says, hello, hello. How are you all? We're good, thank you. I hope your appointment went well, Camille. And says, good morning, everybody, from a lovely sunny day here in Perth. Janet is also in Perth. Uh, Nicole says, hi, Natalie and everyone. I'm so excited to see this tutorial. Nicole is a wire worker too. I've seen a beautiful Howlite -like pendant that um, she made. And what I love is obviously different artists and different people in uh, places all over the world have access to um, different shapes of wire a lot easier. And I know Nicole is most used to using square wire. I'm going to be showing you how to do these today with the round wire, Nicole. It's really, really simple. I think you're going to do an amazing job. Good morning to Ali Umnai. Hello to Heidi. Hello to Mina. Lucy sharing the link for you today. So it's totallybeads.co.uk forward slash Facebook tutorials, forward slash Aurora Pendant E-Ring Set. Um, hello to Esther, who's in a sunny Preston. Hello to Hannah. She says it's dry but windy here at the moment. Might be a storm coming later. It really rained heavy uh, yesterday afternoon. But it's looking quite bright today. I think the rest of the week is probably going to be a little bit wet um, and not so lovely, which makes sense because I'm going to be doing the school run. So obviously it always rains on a school run. Um, good morning to Mina. Hello to Lucy. She says, uh, it looks like a gorgeous make this morning. Angela said she's had a lovely weekend, which is fab to hear. She went to a Japanese garden um, and a church around Edinburgh. How beautiful. Good morning to Joy. Hello to Mandy. She says, good morning, Natalie. Hope you're OK. And good morning to all the beading family. Sheila's in as well. Hello to you. Sue's here. Um, she's saying hello to everybody. It's a bit cloudy and stains today. And the laptop says there's going to be rain later. Um, she had a storm last night about half one with loads of thunder and lightning. I don't think we got that. If we did, I slept through it. Good morning to Mizzy. She says, hi there. I've just joined your channel. Well, welcome, Mizzy. Um, you can find all of our tutorials on totallybeads.co.uk. You can order all the goodies as well for any of the tutorials that you like. And we're always on YouTube as well, so you can catch us up at any time. Good morning to Elaine. Hello to Debbie. Hello to Joe. Hello to Celia. Um, and she says, Mizzy says, I love making wire jewellery, but can't get the adjustable part right. Um, well, these aren't adjustable, um, but they're going to fit perfectly. Hello to Ruth as well. So if you like what we do, give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe on YouTube as well. And you can also hit the notifications on the Facebook page so you're always notified when we go live, which is every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Right, let me take you down on the mat. I'm going to have a little sip of my drink too. And I'm going to show you these gorgeous pendants. So... I started off making this beautiful little pendant and I thought, I know, why not tear it, turn it into a pair of earrings as well? So that's exactly what I did. This is the snake chain that you're going to be getting in your kit as well. You'll notice I've popped on these little acrylic spacer beads, which just add that little bit of detail. And you've got these gorgeous earring hooks which I really, really love. And I think they just look very, very pretty. Let me get a bit of focus. So the jade that we're using today is your beautiful rounds. I've designed this so I will talk you through it step by step. You'll know exactly how many repetitions you need to go around these beautiful beads. They are jade and they are dyed in the most gorgeous colours. You can see a little bit of blue on that one. Look at the blue on this one. So obviously every stone, every crystal that you get is always going to be a little bit different. These are all dyed with the most gorgeous kind of rainbowy colours. So there's purples, there's greens, there's blues on there. They're not doing the justice on my camera. If I just rotate that bead slightly with my finger, you can see the difference in colour. Each one's going to be different, but they're all going to match and make a beautiful set. Look how blue it is. And then that pinky purple on there too. It's so lovely. Diane says, sorry she's late. You've not missed anything at all, Diane. I'm just going through what products are in the kit today and we're going to get going. Camille says, it's tiny. How are you supposed to get those wires around it? It's 
really straightforward and I will show you now. So I'm going to start with my 0 0.8 wire, which is going to be my base wires. And I'm going to cut three pieces for each pendant. So for my earrings, for my pendant, I'm going to do exactly the same method and I will show you how to make it so they become mirror image. So if you can see here, the tops of those bales kind of point in towards each other, one going one way, one over the other. And my pendant goes more upright. So you could just do the pendant. They would look perfectly lovely, I think, as a pair of earrings as well. But there's not much difference to it, just where you pop the bead on. So I'm going to take my 0.8 wire and I'm going to cut six inches. So I'm going to take my first one. I'm going to find where I've put my cutters. And then my second piece, if you've got nylon coated um, pliers, you can use that to straighten out your wire. If you haven't got them, you can use a cloth and just run that through your fingers. It works exactly the same. So I've got three pieces. So if you're going to use your pendant, as I say, this is the way to do it. If you're making your earrings, it's exactly the same way. So you're just going to have to cut more of your wire, but you're going to get all of that in your kits. I'm now going to take my 0 0.3, which is a beautiful weaving wire. And I'm just going to keep this on the reel. I keep my wire on the reel just to stop it flailing about everywhere. But also, I think the, the kind of spool just gives it a little bit of weight. And that helps me um, when I'm weaving. You will find there's a little groove in it. So you can pop your wire through that groove and that will hold it in place. Now, in terms of the measurement of my 0 0.3, you're probably going to need about 75 centimetres for each pendant or each earring. Um, Joy's going to come back because she's got a lot of things to do. So we'll see you later, Joy. Have a lovely day. So I'm going to take my first wire and I'm just going to start my weave <clears throat> about an inch and a half into my wire. So I'm going to lie it against my ruler. I'm going to find about an inch and a half, which is here. And I'm going to start to attach my weaving wire, which is just going to anchor it on. So I'm going to take a little tail end, give me something to hold on to. And I'm going to wrap that round three times. And then I'm going to take my other piece and I'm going to position that on top. Again, I'm going to line them up next to each other. So it's at one and a half inches. And I'm just going to wrap around that wire that I've just added three times. Just that one wire, which is going to be our middle wire. I've got shaky hands today. I don't know why. I'm in my comfort zone with wire, but I also sometimes feel a little bit nervous that... I want to do it justice so you can see how easy it is. I'm going to add the top wire in, so my third wire, and I'm going to wrap just that top wire three times. So I'm bringing it over the top, and each time I do my little weaves, I'm going to take a pair of pliers, and I'm just going to position it down just to keep my weaves neat. So I'll try and show you what it looks like. So I've got three wraps on each individual wire. Hi, Karen. Hello, Anne. Now I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to bring it round all three of the wires three times. So my weaving wire is going round all three of those 0 0.8 wires. Then I'm bringing it back to the top and I'm going to wrap. If you need to, you can splay the ends out of your wire just so you can get it in between. So just to wrap the top wire, I'm going in between the top two wires and I'm going to wrap that round three times. Again, come in with your pliers if you need to or push it with your fingernail. 
So I've got three wraps around the top. Now I'm going to wrap this middle wire on its own. So I'm bringing it underneath the bottom and middle wire and just wrapping around that middle wire three times. You can do any weave you like with this, but I've found doing it this way, I've worked out exactly how many repetitions I'm gonna need. So I've wrapped around that middle wire three times. Again, just pushing it down, just to neaten it up. And then just three times around that bottom wire. And then three wraps around all three wires. And that is going to be my weave repeat. So if you would like, you can cut this little tail end off now. So just come in with your cutters. And then with a pair of pliers, just stick down any little ends just to tuck that in. So this is gonna be your weave repeat. So we're gonna do that seven times. And I'll keep going just so you know what it is that we're doing. So three wraps around the bottom. I'm coming up between the top and the middle wire and down between the middle and bottom wire, just to wrap that middle wire three times. And then up over the top wire, to wrap that three times. over them all and as I'm wrapping I just want to make sure that these wraps just sit next to each other they're not crossing over they're just sitting flush against each other back over the top wire three times and then start to bring that weave down again by going between the bottom and the middle wire over the top between the top and the middle wire so I've wrapped that three times again just keep giving it a little push to make it neat and then back down the bottom wrapping over the bottom base wire three times and all wires three times. So every wrap I do, I'm doing three times. And what you'll start to find, start wrapping that bottom one again, is I'm starting to make these little T shapes. So I've made a T for totally beads. If I can get a little bit of focus, can you see? Hi Linda, she says, morning Natalie, late joining, so eager to see what you're making. We're making a gorgeous pendant and e-ring set. So just repeat that again, I've wrapped three over the bottom wire. I'm going to come up between that top and middle wire. Down between the middle and bottom wire. I'm wrapping that three times. Something is squeaking and I don't know what it is. I don't know whether you can hear it. Maybe it's something outside, like a branch or something. I don't know. Then I'm going up over the top wire. And I'm wrapping that three times. Just going to take a little bit more wire 
off my spool. But I'm popping it back into the groove just to hold it in place. Now I've got to the top, so I'm wrapping round all three. Again, just positioning my wire next to each wrap. Bringing it between the top two wires to wrap over the top. Bringing it between the bottom two wires and between the top two wires just to wrap that middle wire and then three wraps around the bottom. Finish off by wrapping all three wires. So what I want is to have seven little T-shapes. So I've got one, two, three at the moment. This is gonna be my fourth repetition. Three wraps around the bottom. So I've got T-shapes in both directions on the top and on the bottom. Give me a little bit of focus so you can see this weave. Angela's saying she can hear my washing machine. My washing machine's not on, I don't know what it is. Okay, now I'm just gonna go between the top two and out between the bottom two. Just note each time I bring that wire just give it a little push with my finger into position and I can give it a tuck down. So each time I'm just tucking with my pliers, I'm literally, if you can see, just pushing those wires up close next to each other. That's just going to meet in my weave. Now I've got to the top, so I'm going to wrap three wraps over all of my base wires. Three just around the top again. Three around the middle. And three around the base. Now I've got to the bottom, so I'm wrapping three wraps around all three and then on to my next repetition. So my tip would be to do this slowly. I'm going to speed up, but just take your time with it. Position your wire where you want it to be. Push it in with your finger. And as I say, splay those ends of your base wires out if it's just easy for you to get in between. As long as these base wires are running parallel next to each other, you're going to keep the same kind of width and spacing as you go along. If you need to, you can... Always pop, if you've got like a little clamp, you can pop a clamp on the end just to kind of hold your wires in place. But well, I tend to find that just holding it with my hand is sufficient enough. Just going to take another little coil of wire out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I do love using the 0.3 wire. It's nice and fine. It gives you a very delicate looking weave. I've never had it where it snapped. If you do have that happen, it really doesn't matter because I'm doing a three wrap weave. So I can always just attach on 
another piece of wire like I did at the beginning just to attach those three repetitions. Just splay those wires out if I need to, just to make it easy for me to come in between. So I'm wrapping three around the bottom, three around the middle, three around the top. Three around them all, three around the top, three around the middle, and three around the bottom. Keep coming in with your pliers just to push those weaves down and pinch them together every so often. Three around them all. So if you're wondering when you've done three around them all, am I wrapping around the top or the bottom? Just look at what's next to it. So if I've done three around the bottom, I'm going to go three around them all and then three around that bottom wire again. Then to the middle. And then to the top. Just going to move that reel out of the way just to see if we can get a little bit of focus. Uh, Mandy saying how tight are you wrapping the wire? And just wrapping the wire around those wires, Mandy. So you don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want these base wires to move over each other. So all I'm doing is when I get to the end of the wire, I'm just bringing it up and then round. So I'm just pushing it in with my finger. So... I'm struggling to answer that question, I'm afraid. There's no, um, I, I don't know. I just, you just wrap it as long as it's gone around the wire and it's, you know, your weaving wire is taut. That's how tight it will, will be. Um, providing you've got no big lumps or gaps, you're just wrapping it around. So let's see how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I've done an extra one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I don't need these ones coming back down. That's not an issue. I've just done that little bit extra. So I'm going to take that back out. So I'm happy that I've got my seven T-shapes. I'm going to leave a little bit of the 0.3 attached. Don't need much, just maybe a couple of inches. Uh, Margaret says, that looks so delicate. Haven't tried three, three, three and a three. Um, I don't know if it's got a particular name. Sometimes I just um, just weave, and this I thought as it's making little T's, it stands for totally beads. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to come in with my pliers, just check that those weaves are nice and neat, give them a little pinch if I need to. I've gone across it with my pliers to straighten it up, but I don't need to. I've got a little tail end left, and now I'm going to attach my bead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this top wire up that I started with at the starting end and I'm going to leave the others where they are and I'm going to add on my bead. 
Now, if you are wanting to make the E-rings and you want to make them in reverse, so having one going in one direction and one going in the other direction, all you need to do is take your weaving wire that you've just woven like this and just bring up the opposite side. So for one earring, I've used this side where the weave started. For the other earring, I'm just going to pop my bead on the opposite side. And I'll show you, there's not much difference. That's about as different as it gets. Okay, now the tricky part is to start to manoeuvre this wire that we've just woven around the bead. Now I say it's tricky, it's really not because the wire is nice and soft, but what you will find is this wants to curve inwards. So what I'm gonna do with my pliers, again, you can use any pliers, try and be gentle because you don't wanna mar the wire. So you can do it with your nylon coated or you can do it with your uh, flat nose. Is just pinch your wire as you go to keep that shape. So I'm bringing this weave, holding it, the bead down with my thumb, and I'm just bringing that weave right around. Every now and again, quite like it when it turns in to hug the bead, but just in case it started to buckle a little bit, just gonna bring my pliers in just to flatten it out so you can see that weave. So I want that even on all sides. You see how it started to buckle a little bit? So I'm just going to give it a little press down until that weave is hugging the bead. Now, if I'm making my pendant and I want it to be in a more upright position like this, I'm literally just going to start where this weave comes out just to give that a little shape upwards. Because I'm going to make my e-ring, I don't mind if it bends more to one side and it's not directly in the middle. I'm going to position it like this. I'm now going to start to make my bail shape. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers or my bail step pliers or I can just use my finger and I'm going to take this weave that's sticking up and I'm just going to bend that over my round nose or my bail making pliers until it comes down the back of the bead like so. I'm going to take this wire which the bead is on and I'm going to shape that around too. So you might want to do that first. If that's the case, you can just lift up your bail. So I'm bringing this wire around the bead. So it's still hugging that bead. And it's now going in the same direction as those other two base wires. Like so. Just bring my bail back down again. And now I'm going to take this little tail end of weaving wire that we left on and I'm just going to wrap a few times, so three times, around that wire that the bead is sitting on. And that's just going to join my bail wires to the rest of my earring pendant. I'm going to take the wire that's closest, that's coming out of the bail, and I'm going to wrap that around three times as well. If you cut it a little bit short, you can use your pliers just to get in between if you need to. We've just brought that weaving wire around the bead with the wire and then around the wire that's closest to it on the bail. I can then trim that off now. Make sure it's just the weaving wire that you cut. And then tuck down 
that little tail end so it's not sticking out and that's close to that wire. Now I'm going to bring my bail wires down if it's not already directly down through the back of that bead. And then I'm going to take my weaving um, wires, so the 0 0.8 wires that were weaved onto this side that we attach the bead on. And I'm just going to bring them over and secure them. So you can do this one at a time if you like. I'm bringing that one over, this one over, and then the top one over. So these wires which are hugging the bead are running through the bale and over the back of the bale. And then with my wire cutters, I'm just gonna trim off, leaving just enough to go around that bale and tuck in. So again, you can do it one at a time just to make sure it's secure. So the top wire, I'm just tucking in into the bale that middle wire is also being tucked in between the bead and the bale and then the same again with that bottom one so i'm tucking them all in so they're nice and secure and they're looking like this are my pliers from Totally Beads? Uh, the bale step pliers are. Um, I don't think my wire straighteners are, but you might be able to get them on Totally Beads. Any pliers will do. So the usual ones that I started off with are just my round nose. And these ones, I've invested in some special um ones that I just use for wire work and these make our jour on. Um, you can get lots of different brands. Lindstrom's very good, Tronex is very good, some of them are very pricey. You don't need special tools, any tool, anything that you want. I just I quite like using uh, the bent nose. I feel I can get in a little bit. Camille says that's an easier way to finish the veil. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. Okay, so now I'm just going to separate these wires which are coming out the back so I should be just left with these three and I'm just going to space them out a little bit so I've got one in the middle and two coming out either side and now I'm going to flip it back over and now I'm going to start to shape it so the one coming out on the right I'm going to want to go over this part of my bale so I'm just going to bring it over Add a little bit of a curve with my finger, like that. The one from the bottom, I'm wanting to come up towards that wire that I've just bent over, like so. And then this one on this side, you can turn it around if it's easier. I'm going to bring up matching that wire and then across the top towards the bale. So I've created like a curvy little triangle around the stone. Now you can position these where you like. If you don't want it to cover the stone, you can just bring them down a little bit so they're just kind of hugging the weave. And now I'm going to add on my gorgeous little three millimeter acrylic beads just to pretty it up a little bit. So I'm going to do one at a time so they don't fall off. So I'm going to add my first onto that top wire near the bale and I'm just going to push it down so it's in between the bale and the stone or my bead. I'm going to hold that with my finger in place and I'm going to bring that wire around the back. It's going to go right around that bale so it's sitting with my other little bale wrapped wires just reposition it so i've got it where i want it now i'm going to do the same with the others 
So I'm going to add one of my little acrylic spacer beads, slide that on to where I want it. I'm going to want that positioning around the bottom. And again, I'm just bending that wire around there. And then the last one, I'm going to slide it on, have a little look at the front so I'm happy where my wires are sitting and where those beads are positioned. Camille says a crystal would look lovely too instead of the silver beads. You could add anything on but they'd have to be small. I'm using the three millimetre at the moment and I think having the silver just kind of embellishes it a little bit but you can use whatever you want and then I'm going to bring that wire still keeping hold of the front check it's not moving too much and now I'm just going to secure these wires so you'll find you can secure your wires wherever those anchor points are on each one I've done they're all slightly different as long as they're tucked in and they're not going to catch on anything. You don't want, you want to make sure they're tucked in properly so they're not catching on any hair or your skin or anything like that. So I'm going to use the top wire, which is around the bale, and I'm just going to trim off the end of that, leaving probably about a centimetre, maybe a little bit less. I'm going to come in with my pliers. And I'm going to tuck that around that bale too. I want to make sure that it finishes on the inside of the bale and it's tucked in fully. Now I'm going to take this one, which is coming right across. I'm going to move that one up out the way for now, just why I secure this one. And I'm going to cut that wire. And again, with my pliers, I'm just going to bring that in and that's going to also get tucked around that bale. Now this one, the one that's left, can be tucked on to this wire that we've just attached if there's no space around that bale. I don't mind attaching it to any wire as long as it's not attached to itself. What I mean by that, if I was to attach this to this one which is the same wire going around it might slip and it might move i want it to be attached to something else so there's a little bit of space there i'm going to bring that wire over you'll see it's nice and snug so it's not going to catch on anything it's not going to get tangled in your hair if this is your e-ring i'm going to trim that off and then again i'm going to find an anchor point so i think I'm going to bring that over. I'm just holding it with my finger on the front or my thumb just to keep it in place where I want it to be. I think it may have been easier to go underneath it but I'm going to go over the top. I'm going to make sure that that's attached and then I'm just going to bring that back round into a little loop to make sure that's fully attached and that's not going to catch on anything. So I'm just going to turn it in flat. There you go. So it's fully anchored on and it looks like this from the front. Now, if I want to turn this into an e-ring, as I say, if I was going to make that as my pendant, then my chain would just slip through very lovely and I've got myself a pendant. You can pop a jump ring onto this as well. You are getting enough in your kits. If I'm making an e-ring, then I want to make sure that my ear wire is going to fit it so that the earring is going to face forward when I put it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my little six millimetre jump rings. 
I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to open my jump ring up. So I'm taking as much surface area as possible to open that jump ring and I'm going to give it a little twist towards me or away from me rather than open it out to open it. I'm going to make sure that's open quite wide so I can thread that through that weave. Now again, I've made sure that by using these three base wires and doing the weave that we have, that this little six millimeter jump ring is going to fit onto that with absolute ease. You've got plenty of space in there to attach your earring hook um, and it's, it's going to fit comfortably. It'll give it a little bit of a dangle. Oh, Angela says she's making the jump ring earrings at the moment. If you're wondering what Angela's talking about, we did a live with uh, jump rings and a little bit of chain a couple of weeks ago. It's worth going back and having a watch that video because I wasn't feeling too well and my hands were shaky as anything and everyone was being very patient with me. Right, now I've just attached my earring hook on. You can use any earring hook, but in the kit, you're going to get these absolutely beautiful ones. And I'm just going to close that over. So you can see there it's slightly open. I'm going to use a pair of my pliers. And I'm just very gently going to apply a little bit of pressure, not onto the jump ring, but just onto that little loop there. And I'm just going to close that over. So tiny little movements, just holding it in place. Just to close that into a little loop and close that over. And there you have your pendant or earring. Now, bear in mind, I didn't cheat and say, here's one I've made earlier. I have done one already just to show you the opposite way of wrapping it. But this has took me, I would say, half an hour. We've still got 10 minutes left in the live. And obviously, we did a bit of chatting and I showed you the absolutely beautiful kits that you can get today for just £6.99. Um, so... I would say a very quick make. If you're new to wire, it might take you a little bit longer doing that weave. Just take your time with it. Um, please give it a go because what, what are we doing here if we're not going to give things a try? And when, if we're going to be afraid of making mistakes, then we're never going to do anything. So give it a go. Um, Mandy says, beautiful. You make it look easy. Think um, I order, but prices with... Uh, or practice with different beads first. There is that mixed strand as well, Mandy, that's on the website. So if you're wanting to get a mix of colours, we've got the mixed gemstone round beads, um, which is £7.50. You're going to get loads on that string. It's 15 inches, so there's going to be all sorts there that you can um, do. Uh, Nicole says, I'm trying to follow along, but I'm a little slow on the wraps. I'm also using 0.4 instead of 0.3 since I don't have any to hand. Nicole, you might find that your weave repetitions might need to be slightly less. If you've got a slightly thicker weave in wire, the 0.4 will do just as well. Um, but obviously it's going to be a tiny bit thicker, so you might need less. You just have to experiment with it. All I would say, hon, if you are making earrings just count your weaves so when it comes to doing the next one you know exactly how many just to make it matching now when i did this earring i popped my bead on this side which was the start of my weaving wire and you can see that when i've made the curve it's going up in this direction from the right side is going over to create that bail if I pop my bead on the opposite side, so on the right, when I start to bring this weave round, which I'm going to do again for you now. So I'm just positioning it with my fingers. I will come in with my pliers at some point, as I say, just to make sure it's not kind of bending over too much. I'm bringing this weave all the way around the bead and it's going up past those wires If you need to, you can just give it a little straighten out. I do quite like it when it hooks the bead, though, um, as long as it's kind of bending 
in towards it and not the other way really you want to be able to see that gorgeous weave that you've done so i'll just do that one very quickly that's just a gentle little reposition so you'll see now that when i bring this over the top let's i can bring this round i can bring this bead this wire around that bead first if that's easier still got that weaving wire attached it's just going to be attached onto the opposite side that's no problem you can still use it to attach to the veil and position it up a little bit now when i use my round nose pliers or my veil step pliers if you're using um the veil step make sure you're using the same kind of rung on your your step just so your bail is going to be the same on each e-ring if you're using your round nose pliers just make a little mental note of of which um whereabout on your pliers you've brought that over so now i've got that little bit of weaving wire which i've just attached onto the bottom i'm still going to attach that around again onto one end of my bail i'm going to give that a trim i'm going to cut it if i can between there's a little bit of a space there i haven't tightened that enough let me take that out and do it again so i think mandy asked me how taut am i pulling these wires i want to make sure mandy that there's no big gap so I'm just going to pull it tight enough. See there, it started to get a little bit of a space in it. I want that nice and tight. So I'm just going to wrap that around three times. And then when I cut it, I'm going to try and cut it on the inside. So although I'll still be tucking that wire down, it's going to finish on the inside of my wrap. I'll just cut that a tiny bit more. Okay. So then I can bring these round again. I do tend to bring them round one at a time just to get them to sit flush and flat next to each other. And then I'm going to trim each one off. I'm going to use any pliers. I'm going to use these ones just to show you that you don't need fancy pliers. Any pliers you've got are going to do exactly the same job. I just like the fact that I can get in a little bit tighter with those ones. But you'll see here, I'm using, I think these were like the first pliers I ever got. They came in a little kit and there was my cutters and my round nose in there. And I still use them. Just want to reposition that a little bit so I can tuck that down flat. Okay. So I'm going to do the same where I'm going to splay these out. And then I can start to add my beads on. But you'll see now that by adding the bead onto the other side, where I added it on this way, it's now leaning more towards the left. So I've created a mirror image pair. Um, you don't have to. You could just do the same. They would look lovely in the same direction. But I think if you're going to spend the time making them look professional, then it's lovely to have a little mirror image pair. I'm absolutely loving the colours of these jade. Um, we might as well carry on, mightn't we? We might as well finish this one off. I've got a few minutes left. So your kits today 
are an absolute bargain price. They've been reduced. They are just £6.99. You are getting everything you need in your kit, all your wire, your gorgeous dyed jade. Um, you're getting... That one's going to go across the top. You're even getting a snake chain. So once you've made these into your pendant, you can wear it straight away. Um, we've also got your ear wires, absolutely everything you need in your kit today. So you can make this lovely little set. I think it's an absolute bargain. I think you'll agree for what it is, it's you know, it's not very expensive at all. It's not going to take you too long either. So I think, you know, if I was to sell this, um, well, I'd definitely be selling it a lot more than £6.99. So you're going to get your money's worth. I think they make absolutely beautiful gifts. I would be thrilled to receive this for my birthday, for Christmas, I don't think I need to cut that one. I think that length is long enough. You will find that if you're adding on um, to the opposite side, your wires might be just that little bit shorter, but it's still more than enough to add your beads on and to have enough to kind of attach them around the back as well. Just holding it with my thumb, just so I know where about I want to attach these onto, move those wires a little bit more central, give me a bit more of an anchor point. So I'm going to attach this one to that one. So I'm pushing it down so it doesn't move out of place. Just going to bring that wire round a little bit. Make sure I've repositioned that where I need it to be. And tuck that in. Sorry, I'm off camera there. Always holding things close to my face so I can see. Just want to make sure I've got those ends tucked in. And this one I could attach to the bale. Or I could even attach it to this one up here because it's still a different wire. I think I might see if I can get that in the bale. Oh, okay. Can okay, move that back down? I'm just going to give it a little pinch. As I say, I want any of the edges or the corners to be tucked into the earring itself or the bale itself. Reposition that bead. And if you want to or you need to, you can always kind of add a little bit of pressure with your thumb or your finger just to reshape where you want those wires or you want those beads to be. If you need it to be a little bit more flush, you can take your pliers and you can just pop a little bit of pressure around it just to hug it a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in my other one. Where have I put it? There it is. And I'm just going to check that they look fairly even. Just going to move it more so those wires around the wire rather than the bead itself. So again, I can always just reposition and tuck in if I need to. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Give that a little tighten. So if I ever need to tighten a wire, I can just pop my pliers on it and pop a little bend in it. And that will tighten it up so that bead doesn't move as much. 
Um, DIY Offbeat Wedding says hi there. Hello. If you've just joined us, we're right at the end of our live. So I've been making some lovely little earrings and a beautiful pendant as well using the dyed rainbow jade. They're absolutely stunning. The colours on these are just so pretty. And obviously it's a gemstone as well. So you're getting all those wonderful properties that jade has. Um, it's renowned for being a very lucky uh, stone, bringing you good fortune. And I think um, if you were to be gifted these, you would be very, very fortunate because they're absolutely beautiful. So I'm hoping that you've enjoyed the live today. All I've done now is just attach my jump ring on. I'm gonna just attach my ring hook. Just going to open that out a little bit, give it a tiny little turn just to fit my jump ring on. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it on so my earring is facing forwards when I wear it. And I'm just going to come in and very, very gently pop a little bit of pressure onto that ring just to close that earring up. So there you have a gorgeous pair of jade rainbow jade earrings i think they're so pretty um let me bring myself up let's wear them let's put them in um so elaine says absolutely gorgeous thank you so much this color actually is really going to go with my top today because i'm wearing like a, a cream kind of top so the earring hooks are really comfortable I do have to find the hole in my ear um Nicole says, great tutorial. I love the wire wrapping. I've used some how like beads I may use for this. They would go with your pendant as well, Nicole, wouldn't they, that you've made? Um, so they're very, very pretty, very comfortable to wear and an absolute bargain price. If you are buying the kit, um, which I hope you will, do bear with us at the warehouse. We've got um, an awful lot of orders, which is wonderful to get through, but We've got quite a bit of an issue, I think, with um, Royal Mail strikes and whatnot. So um, things might take just a little bit longer to reach you than normal. Where is the hole in my ear gone? It's there somewhere, I can feel it. No. Nope. Um, Sheila says, love making these, Natalie. I'm thinking of sticking acrylic nail on my index finger so I can use it as a tool like you do with your nail thank you so much it looks so easy you're most most welcome um I shouldn't use my nails as tools I know I don't know if Joe's still watching um but Joe is um a fabulous nail technician amongst other things and she says your nails are jewels not tools um I do try my best to use my tools because that's what they're there for but I know I always use my nails um, I'm not too sure what size snake chain this is whether it's the 50 or 60 centimeter let me attach this on and there you go so I've got my gorgeous earrings that you've just watched me make and a pendant too and I just think they're absolutely beautiful I love the way they dangle as well with those little jump rings Joe's watching sorry Joe um they they look a mess at the moment uh, I do you want to know my confession Joe I painted them and I used my UV lamp and I never soak it off I always pick my gel off and I know I shouldn't because it weakens my nails but I did it so there you need to come and do my nails and then i won't i won't have to do these things so uh beautiful beautiful earrings today gorgeous gorgeous colors beautiful beautiful rainbow jade they're absolutely gorgeous thank you so much for joining me today i will see you on friday what am i doing friday i'm making necklaces with you on friday and uh, nicole says they're so pretty such a lovely design mandy says thank you natalie great life have a lovely day um and i wish you all the same as well so i'll be back with you on friday kitty will be with you on wednesday so please come back and join us then have a lovely lovely week joe's giving me horror face I'm so sorry joe <laughs> lots of